Hi there traders, welcome to Admiral Market. Sorry for that small delay. We're here with a live webinar taking a look at the Forex market, of course, and uh, some commodities and, and stock indices. Uh, we'll be taking a look at market structure and pattern. That's a new topic for the upcoming uh, month of August. So looking forward to that. Once again, market structure and patterns. Uh, before we kick off, though, be aware that this webinar is shown to a global audience, but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out if it is suitable for you. Also, please note that trading for exchange at Global Financial Markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risks involved when trading. All right, so we're going to take a look at the, the live charts uh, in just a second. Uh, if by any chance, perhaps you are visiting for the first time, great, that's welcome. Uh, we have many traders here that uh, luckily join us regularly, so I hope that uh, you'll do that too. You can check out a lot of info with AdamMarkets.com, not only webinars here in the education sec section with uh, Forex and CFD webinars, but uh, you'll find out many other things, analytics, uh, platforms, uh, for instance, uh, a special uh, Supreme Edition platform that has a lot of add-ons compared to the standard MT4, and also what you can trade and how you can start trading. So after the webinar, feel free to go to admiralmarkets.com and, and check it out. Now, let's take a look. Let me just quickly switch profiles here. Ah, thank you, Sun. Sundar, that's really great to hear that, uh, saying that uh, regularly joining and finds our webinars, Nenet, referring to Nenet and myself, very useful. So appreciate those kind words. We always do. Sorry, it's loading, and I'm going to move the charts in just a second. And I hope that, you know, this chart will move. No, it's a bit slower side. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, Sundar, are you in any, any trades at the moment yourself? Are you looking at anything interesting from your point of view? Let me know. I'm always interested to see what the other traders are thinking about. Uh, I Maybe some of you have already seen my analysis on Monday, for instance, or, or uh, with Admiral Markets, for instance, with the technical analysis. Then you know that I was looking for short you know, despite this this bullish price action and that uh, you can see right here. And price was definitely challenging uh, the level I had in mind as invalidation. I said uh, clearly in the video and in my wave analysis earlier today that 118.25 is, is basically where I would say that my analysis is, is outdated, let's say it's wrong, although I don't like to use the word wrong. Uh, but uh, it's, it's invalidated. So luckily it didn't happen. Obviously I'm happy because uh, this trade is now into in plus, right? I took it, as you can see here, around 117.87. I had the stop loss, as I said, just above 118.25, well, probably 118.29 or 118.28. Price went up to 118.22, so just missed the invalidation level, but it did miss, so that's great. And from my perspective, uh, I'm aiming at the S1 weekly and the 117 round level, just below it, as you can see, about 116.92. I might, I don't know, that's my initial target. I might move it up a pip, few pips, 10 pips, maybe to 117.04 and grab those, those 80. That's something I might think about. Uh, Sundar is saying that uh, closed your dollar into profit. Excellent news. That's great. Uh, I'm very happy to hear that. I'm still in that trade and still hoping for a small push. What I would like to see, unfortunately, this candle just started in a way. It's just really literally six minutes, and this is a huge candle already. Um, what I would like to see is a good candle close at the end of this hour to show that the bears are in control of this particular hour. And then I would like to see, I think that there's a good chance in the next few candles. Sorry, this is not an hourly chart. This is a four-hour chart. Uh, I'm getting it mixed up. Uh, but... Um, in any case, this hourly candle did close um, strong. Uh, this is actually the breakout candle. I think that 
is a very you know very pretty good sign a very good sign uh so i think that is a, a good example of a breakout candle on the one hour chart four hour chart is not closed yet it would be extra confirmation if this candle closes near the low why is that important because that shows that the, you know the sellers remain in control if there's a big wick then i would probably close the trade maybe for a small profit profit perhaps right so i am risking a bit because obviously the trade is still open i'm risking a bit of profit that i have now for more profit i'm doing this on purpose because uh i think that the analysis is so far kind of proving the direction i had in mind so i'm just keep sticking to that but i do have a target the tp at 117. part of that has to do with wave patterns i don't want to bore you with wave patterns not everyone is a big wave trader but it has to do with the fact that this is a one two three potentially one two three four five and I think that the fifth wave then could see an ABC before perhaps we see more downside. So I, I would like to take the profit there. I, I wouldn't want to aim or, or let's say I wouldn't want to keep uh, a trade without a TP uh, and use a trail because I think that it will, you know, there's a good chance it might make an ABC to the upside. So if it's a good four hour candle, I think there's a pretty high chance that price will make that final dip. And who knows, it could fly lower. I'm not saying it has to bounce at this one. I would not be looking necessarily for reversal trades there, uh, upside trades. I am looking to exit with profit, but I'm not looking to trade it to the upside because of the fact that I'm not sure how strong this momentum could last. You know, 117 might be a small bouncing spot, but who knows? It could tomorrow morning, what it could do, it could hit my target, make a bear flag tomorrow morning. It could break that bear flag and continue down to 116. Look at what happened with the pound USD. You know, I was looking for the retracement. I didn't get it. One of the trades I would like to trade was the cable downside too. I am not in that trade uh, because it, it didn't make the retracement I was I wanted to see. It didn't retrace deep enough, and that's my bad luck. I'm not in that trade, and the pound is moving lower without me. But I'm in the in zero, so that's a, that's balances it a bit. But that sometimes can happen. So. The TP makes sense, but if tomorrow, if, if let's say later today, price hits this TP and then makes a bear flag, and tomorrow morning looking for a new short down to 116, I think also makes sense because then it's showing the potential to continue just like it did with the pound today. And in that case, uh, I will forget my wave count because we're getting probably some kind of extension of the downside. And 116 is the bigger target because that's where we have or I have at least a 23.6 fib, which is uh, placed on a bigger swing high, swing low, as you can see all the way from this bottom here, beginning of April, uh, to the recent top. And I think that this leg could get a retracement. And therefore, I think that the 23.6 fib at 116 is where price could move down. And that could be a bouncing spot back up. And um, it could be uptrend again, or one more correction down to the 38, and then uptrend. All right, so those are the two most likely scenarios in, in my point of view, either uh, 23 or 0.6 or uh, the 38.2 fib. All right, so I hope uh, everyone's following me. If not, feel free to reach out. I see some comments about um, the dollar cat and odd, odd yen, which is great. And I'm going to take a look at those three questions in just a second. I'll just finish uh, the majors and we'll take a look at that. I do have a question from Sundar if I would go long at 117.20, and I, I guess I answered that, but just to verify, I would not personally. Uh, what I would do is take profit, see if there's a bear flag. If there is, I would try to short it, and if not, if there is a downside and a strong bounce, uh, I would see if there's an ABC potential there, like this. I might consider a long here, the start of wave C and a short at the end of wave C down to 116. But only if there is a strong bullish reaction to the S1 target. If it's flat, I would be looking for shorts. So that's that's just that's my view at the moment regarding the euro dollar. I don't have much to add really. Uh, I think uh, I don't want to let's say uh, drag on too long uh, about this one particular pair but i only wanted to add quickly a moving average 144 ema 
All right, there we go. That's the official target for divergence between these uh, these tops. And uh, it's not exactly the 23.6 fib, but I would say it's, it's pretty close to it. 116.30. So there is a confluence there between the S2, the moving average, long-term moving average, and the 23.6 fib. So that's the, the last thing I wanted to add on the euro dollar. Let's, let's move on, though. I'm, I'm sure there are uh, many of you who, who want to look at other pairs. So, yeah, my I was hoping for a move up to the weekly pivot point. I thought that would have been sweet because of the previous bottom and the 38th and the moving average and the weekly pivot point. And I thought there was a decent chance when price was making this kind of this kind of upside. Uh, and I, I expected a bit of a dip in my wave analysis, and I was hoping for this last push up like this because I expected this this red dip here because of this resistance indeed. But instead of making the blue arrow, it actually instead broke through this trend line and whoosh down it went with the euro dollar. Uh, so already earlier actually in the euro dollar. Euro dollar was, by the way, I was making fun of it on Twitter because it was just for hours and hours it was just going sideways. And someone wrote to me like, I can, if you don't mind, just very quickly, it's just funny. Just, I, I don't want to delay our analysis here, but just very quickly for the fun. Um, let's see where it is. Yeah, here. Someone wrote me here, interesting, who will win the competition, dollar versus euro? And I wrote back something like that uh, they're you know, really making it very lengthy battle or something like that because <laughs> it's really taking many many hours so you really need to have a lot of you need to have some patience at least to kind of uh wait for the outcome here because i mean if you look at it hour by hour it, 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 it did take quite some time uh but yeah back to this pound uh and uh it hit the Target, perhaps? I don't know. I have a, I used this fib, but this fib is not really that useful anymore. So let me take this away. It did hit the S1, that's for sure. Uh, I will do... Just give me one second. Making a quick measurement here. I personally would not be looking to short the pound. I think that um, this boat has sailed a bit. I'm not saying it's it's not impossible, but I, I would not uh, be looking for it. I think that at this moment, I only see two options for myself. That is, price makes an ABC correction, and then I can look for shorts, short setups, or there is another bear flag like this, but it has to be a pretty, a pretty, sorry, a pretty uh, lengthy one, in fact, uh, because I wouldn't be surprised if there's divergence between these bottoms. So from this point of view, I don't think it's a great uh, shorting spot. I mean, it, you never know; these things can extend. But right at the support level, I would need to. I wouldn't be interested. I would need to see a new formation, a new structure, a new pattern emerge. So that's my view. I would need to see an ABC zigzag or or a, tr a rising wedge or a bear flag. On the dollar again, upside is finally happening. Uh, here too needed a, a lot of patience though because uh, price went into the 120, 110, 25, 110, 50 zone. 110, 25 was the ultimate invalidation level, or to be very precise, it was 110, 20, 110, 18. Price came very close, but ultimately bounced and is it's back on track to the upside. And uh, it, from my point of view, my wave analysis is saying that it's basically finishing a upside correction. It could go up to the 38.25 at 111.60 in my view. If it has engulfing twins like this, I think it's still a, a trade idea that uh, could be tradable in the near future. I think that if there's a little bit of retracement of this hourly candle, maybe back to the weekly pivot point, for instance, uh, a fib on this hour candle, pretty strong candle, 
or adjustment halfway to this hourly candle or on a 15 minute chart if there's some bear flag like this for instance to the 50 fib and at a break of a bear flag there are multiple ways of trading it I, in my view as as you know me i like you know i have multiple kind of ideas how one could tackle this but um i think there's nothing wrong with a fib in this case even a pending order with the stop loss below this bottom will it work out no one knows that's just how the market goes uh but i think it's a decent probability it's a reversal setup though it's not a worth the trend setup let's take a look at the dollar cat that was the first one martin and uh aruk sunday uh i hope i said it correctly uh have mentioned that and um whether the dollar cad will go to 130. let's see so we've been a uh, strong bullish candle engulfing twins and uh, we've seen multiple days up on top of that we talked about this trend line and how it could create a bounce but it's actually breaking so it's expanding this channel and it's uh, making the bullish channel uh, the angle more bullish and the break to the upside is indicating that this channel is not corrective necessarily now we do see the dollar cat has reached the long to moving average which in itself is a, is a target once the once divergence is present doesn't mean that price can get not cannot extend higher but this is a bouncing spot and uh let's take a look at the daily chart so from my point of view although we have bullish candles it is more of a resistance spot and considering the four hour candles one two three four five six candle if the sixth candle has a big wick like this and bearish i would say that that could be a failure or not a big failure i mean like a small bounce uh in lack of a break of this high in any case in that case and uh, i think we could you know, dollar cat could make a retracement it doesn't have to be mega retracement it could just be back to the weekly pivot point i would be putting a fib from this very bottom to this very top and uh, looking for some confluence it could be the 50 it could be the 38.2 fib and those could be bouncing spots so price might make just a like a zigzag here and then still bounce up to a, to the upside and still bounce with the trend uh, and still bounce uh, up to 130 perhaps right what could be the targets we can take a look at that right now 130 is a high target but uh, it could go to 129 minus 61.8 target for instance 128 minus 127 minus 27.2 target so uh that it has that potential i think that uh this retracement will not necessarily break this channel to the downside it could use the support the bottom for a bounce and make that uh move up to the target i think that is that is a, a possibility that it's pretty decent if it does break this channel of course if it breaks through the fifth specifically the 61.8 fib then you know tables are turning and the dollar cad is not as bullish is not retracing as deeply to the upside and uh, this retracement to the lot to moving average uh, could be it i also see a second question from martin dollar cad has bearish divergence but seems to be on the way up uh which is uh bearish divergence let's see which time frame maybe on the hourly it's true and hourly there is slight divergence between the tops which is one of the reasons i think that it could make this retracement uh, the divergence so that's a there's a confluence with what you're saying uh with what we were both saying actually uh i think that uh, the target that i use with divergence 
specifically with a four hour chart or higher, but even on hourly chart, we can use it, is a long term moving average. So, where is the long term moving average on this hourly chart? We have divergence on the hourly chart indeed. Is a long term moving average. Where is the long term moving average right here? So, it's pretty close, and it's just a zone. So, it's pretty close to the 38.2 fib. It's pretty close to that weekly pivot point that we just talked about, and the fact that it could make this and I continue uh, with the bigger four hour chart that is possible, right? Like this, and I make an upside to the minus 61.8 target. Get back into the supply demand zone that we have on the chart. There's two green lines. I don't know why they're green, but anyhow, uh, resistance zone. I should make that red, and uh, it, it could move down again from there. Perhaps. So the divergence on the outer chart will create this first downside. The channel and upside trend might might make this bigger move up, and then we get into the resistance confluence zone that might create the downside what you see here with all these lines is basically called uh, the path of least resistance this is what i think is, is the most likely thing that will happen and um that gets updated you know it it's not something that's static depending on new price action new candles uh, it stays the same or we have new information new inform new confirmation and new invalidation levels and uh, and sometimes the analysis changes and gets updated. But this is the current path of least resistance, in, in my view, on this uh, dollar CAD. And I think that, I mean, this was already a good wick. Could have been a, could have been something to think about, but that's already behind us. Looking at the future, I think that this four-hour candle would be a pretty good, good solid info. I, I think. It's yeah, that, that would pre look pretty good, I think. But that's just uh, once again my view. Odd yen. Let's take a look. Dushan, you're in odd yen. That's great, and then profit. Excellent. Let's take a look. Here it is. Aussie is weakening. Even against the CAD, uh, the yen is weakening too. So, you know, the Aussie weakness is maybe um, doesn't have the biggest effect against the yen side, but the, the Aussie itself is indeed uh, moving nicely, I think. Just looking at a few few time frames quickly to gain a grasp because this is not one I was really looking at actively during the day. I was more monitoring your New Zealand, all New Zealand, uh, your dollar, dollar yen, and, and the pound. Uh, let's see, odd uh, yen. I'm trying to get my wrap my head around it, but I think that. Uh, It's a bit choppy. So we have good upside and we have choppy downside. And it's at the long to moving average. And it's testing this, this strong uh, support level at the long to moving average. So I am not that confident that it will break this bottom. I think that there is a good chance there could be a bounce. This uh, this downside is looking pretty choppy and corrective. Yes, it is a downtrend on the hourly chart, but if you keep in mind the four-hour chart, it's more looking like a retracement within the uptrend at this moment. I wouldn't go long. I would like to see a break of this resistance trend line first to confirm the potential of the upside. But downside might be challenging too, in my view, because of this support. So it's just my view, of course, but I think that um, I would probably, when looking at this template, uh, 
be more inclined to use a tighter trail, either to lock in profit, maybe move the you know stop loss to break even, for instance. Etc. So I'm not sure where the trade was taken by Dushan, of course, but this is kind of the structure and pattern that I would say could still break. I would say there's a higher chance it could break to the upside than to the downside, in my view, at this moment. It's just that the Aussie is a bit weak at the moment, so it's still going sideways. But if it does break support, then I would change my mind, and then uh, there could be uh, a bigger Aussie, uh, perhaps even a reversal going on. Uh, Angel, very good to uh, very good myself. Weekend was was busy, but it was good, and I um, hope you too. I hope you had a good weekend too. Uh, gold, we can take a look at that. I haven't looked at it yet, so you're perfect timing. All right, there we go. Some uh, some strong pushes up. Uh, Angel was spot on with uh, shorting it up in here. So applause. Uh, you know, great job there. Really took the turning spot. Uh, I guess you know, almost picked picked the turn almost. So excellent, excellent work. I was a bit uh, more conservative, a bit more, uh, let's say, or I don't know how to say it, more risk adverse, maybe, uh, or less less accurate, uh, you know, either however you want to say it. But I was waiting for a four-hour bearish candle to confirm it, uh, and that's what happened here. So from my perspective, the signal was this bearish candle, because the bullish candle itself, uh, I thought, was still a danger that it could still continue upwards and break the bearish candle was the one that I was looking for, which is the seventh or sixth candle from a time factor pattern. Hi, Namdi. Yes, I can imagine uh, because uh, many of the webinar visitors here are joining regularly for months, maybe even a year or more sometimes. So uh, I understand that. Hang on just a second. I'll just finish this gold and uh, we I'll take a look uh, at the next uh, currency pair with a, a bit more, let's say, slower look. And we'll take a look at uh, everything, you know, without this details. We'll just take it a bit um, from, from the start, okay? So I was looking for this candle. That was my signal. But anyhow, you can see price is moving, but it's moving choppily. It's moving quite slow. But it is moving down, and I think it could get down. Gold itself can retrace down to 1240, which is the 50 fib, 1230, which is the 51.8 fib. I think those are pretty likely. New Zealand, I regarding the fundamentals, we have to expect the interest rate. Indeed, that's coming up, so be careful with the New Zealand side. And you know, use your own uh, management about that. Uh, be careful to trade it. Maybe not trade it is always wise. Be careful to trade after it, stuff like that. Uh, Angel is targeting 11.70. Indeed, he's a bit more aggressive, but targeting a bit further down. I personally see this as a, as a five, five wave up, so I'm more cautious and think that a higher target is, you know, is more of a, is a better place to aim for. So let's see which one uh, plays out. Um, we'll find out soon enough. We can take a look at the euro pound. I'm going to go a bit slower here and take a look at uh, maybe some basics first together with you for Namdi, who is maybe starting with Forex. Is that true, Namdi? Have you started recently? All right, so we're looking at the euro pound, euro versus British pound. On our chart, we have, as you can see, one moving average. We have the Admiral Market Keltner band with a pivot point indicator, 
we have an awesome escalator at the bottom. Now, the just started a few days ago on a demo account. Perfect. So the awesome escalator is a, is a bottom indicator showing momentum, which is fast price action, which is fast candlesticks. Uh, basically, uh, when there's prices moving quickly, let's say, you will see this bottom indicator rise. Uh, if it's bullish momentum, if it's bullish price action, then you'll see the rise. And if you see quick downside price action, you'll see it fall. So it gives us an indication of, of the direction of the price. Uh, the moving average gives us a, an indication of the direction of the price. And uh, these two, the Keltner band and pivot points, give us indication about support and resistance. All right, they give us, if price is below the level, it's resistance. If price is above this key, these key levels, they will act as support. So these tools give us information about trend, the direction of price, that's one thing. And the second thing is about support and resistance, which has the tendency to, to stop price and price can, can pause there or reverse there and go against the trend. We use these tools to, to make analysis. So we, in this webinar, look at uh, trend, as I just indicated, support or resistance, but also patterns. There are many patterns out there. Patterns are repetitive price action uh, patterns. So they repeat. You can see chart patterns, candlestick patterns. We don't have time to explain all of those, but remember those names. Those are very popular patterns to look at. Candlestick patterns are patterns that use these candlesticks. So what we're doing here is trying to judge what is the most like what could be good trades, right? At what spot, when, and how, and where, and make a trade plan accordingly to analyze the the price and the larger charts and the other time frames to make a judgment about the structure of the market. How does the charts look like? And then to see if there's something interesting and to see where and when it, it might be interesting to trade. So first step is in, in analyzing it. Second step is to see if there are any trades or not. Uh, and the third would be to trade it or not. And if there's nothing, then we move on and we take a look at a, a different currency pair. So what you'll see now is my analysis looking at different time frames. And uh, we can start with the monthly chart. We can look monthly charts. It's good to take a look. Just not, you know, we, don't need a, we don't need a ton of information here, but looking at the last month's candle, was it bullish, for instance? That gives us some idea about the sentiment that we could expect this month, because often enough, there's a continuation. Uh, if, it's, if it's a decision candle, for instance, like prices here, like this, where there's no basically movement, you know, there's a, a big, the candle has no body, if, if you know what the candlestick looks like. If not, I would definitely recommend to look at candlesticks. So that doesn't give us much information, right? But last month was bullish, and you can see that, generally speaking, this trend is up. Why? Because you look at higher highs and higher lows. You can put a channel on this chart like this, and you can see there's a sequence. The direction is up when you look at the green lines. This is a trend channel. So often enough, it's best to look for trades with the trend. More experienced traders can look for trades against the trend. You can look for trades against reversals. They're called reversals, but this is more difficult because reversals happen less often. Prices either ranging a lot of the times or trending. Reversals occur less often. So uh, from this point of view, uh, we can see that price is showing strong bullish candles. On the weekly chart, we zoomed in. So we can try to look for a retracement to see if there is a dip within the trend. So if the trend is moving up like this, you know, it could be good to look for a retracement like this to try to get a discount within this trend. The other technique that you can use is 
wait for a price to uh, make a trend, wait for retracement, and then try to break trade the break after the retracement. So what happens is, for instance, here you can see price is trending, right? Here it makes a retracement, and when it breaks above the retracement, it continues. So it's like a green signal, a green light that look, this uh, this trend is active again. It's ready to to go up again. So we can trade the retracement within the trend, or we can trade the breakout slash continuation of that trend. So I know there's you know a lot of concepts here, and I know it's a bit quick, um, but I would encourage you to look at past webinars on YouTube as well of Janet and myself, and future webinars, and the more you you know look at our webinars, the more you'll get used to the terminologies and and uh, these concepts that are used uh, when analyzing and using technical analysis. At this moment, we're in an uptrend, but we don't have any retracement on this time frame, nor do we have it on the four-hour chart. There was a retracement here. This is a good example. Price was moving up on the daily chart. It was moving up on the four-hour chart. It was going sideways, and then it broke, as you can see, and continued higher. That's a, a classical breakout. This right here was a pullback to the 38.2 fib, a bounce and continuation. So this was a pullback and here was a breakout. Now price has reached its minus 272 target, which I use, it's a fib level, and it has reached the R1 resistance pivot point. From my point of view, it's a strong ceiling. It's a strong resistance spot. So it might be worth trading as a reversal, but not with the trend. Because I think that the chance of price making a retracement here is, is, is pretty decent. Looking at this one hour chart, I would not want to trade long here because the retracement, it has hit the target and therefore the retracement might be larger. It might not be that small. That's because of the heaviness of the importance of that resistance zone. So making that particular judgment does take some, some time, but it is worth the effort. Because if you can analyze trend, supporter resistance and patterns, then you understand the DNA, let's say the heartbeat of the market, and you'll be able to apply that on more instruments, on more time frames, and you will not be, let's say, dependent on a system that generates signals and you don't know how those signals are derived or how they're what they're based on. By using this, you can basically have the tools to continuously analyze the market and not and, and do that yourself. So you would it's a skill in my view. That's the advantage. Anyhow, I'm I'm you know, go, going into a side detail here away from the analysis, but Basically, I think that there could be retracement. How far could this retracement go? I'm trying to analyze that right now, in fact. I'm trying to look at the fibs. What might be a good fib to put on the chart? And I'm not too sure at this moment. I'm just taking a look at this entire upside and let me take a look at the hourly chart. Okay, I think I might have a preference on this hourly chart. I would probably put a fib from here to here. Yes. And um, of course, there's no guarantee. I wouldn't personally trade a reversal myself. I'm just saying that if I had to choose, that's what I would choose. I'm not a, personally a big reversal trader. 
I like to trade with the trend. It's not that I always avoid reversals. It's just that reversals are riskier and are more difficult to catch because reversals happen less often. So there's you need more confluence. You need more proof, let's say, more evidence, uh, more reasons uh, to take a, uh, a reversal trade. So unless there's strong arguments for me to take a reversal, I'd rather skip those reversals. Sometimes it does happen that I do take reversals, but I skip mo you know, many of them in any case. I still think that this trend is up despite the, uh, the small uh, the bearish price action that we're seeing. I think that price might make it down all the way to the pivot point. If it does, I think it could be a good confluence zone. I think this could be a good spot where the trend might continue. And I'll say why. Uh, Angel mentioned the 50 fib too, I just see now. So he's thinking the same. And the reason is, is because there are a couple of things. There's a moving average. Uh, there's a, a weekly pivot point. Uh, there's a 50 fib. Uh, there's a 90.0.90 level. It's a round level. That's also a psychological support level. And there's a bottom in here. So there are a couple of things there, as you can see, uh, that add up. Samuel is also adding, by the way, that the euro pound might come down because of the latter four hour chart, a four hour candle, sorry. Yeah, so indeed at this moment, very bearish candle and the pound yen. So indeed, so that's, I'm thinking the same. If, uh, let's see, Angel's asking, so this is the euro pound, just to wrap it up here, I guess. Now, the, this is, uh, you know, throwing in some tools and concepts to try to analyze, is it interesting to trade? And if so, uh, in what direction and when and where and how? Because the next one question we didn't really talk about is how. If price gets to 90, what then? Right? Uh, that's, again, a, a pretty... Um, you know, that would be, again, the next step that would be take some time to answer. But there are a couple of, very quickly, there could be some options like a pending order, obviously. Uh, with And then, of course, we have to think about the target and stop loss. This is not a trade plan detail. So we could put the stop loss below this bottom, for instance. I take the entry here. I put the target at uh, the minus 270 target, which is at 91.30. Right? So entry here, target here, and stop loss there. That could be one way. The other way could be waiting for price to get to the 50 fib, but waiting for some candlestick reactions to that level, to the support level, so that we have a confirmation that price is indeed reacting to that zone. It could be a candlestick pattern. It could be a chart pattern on a lower time frame. There are a lot of options here, uh, but basically market order. Two basic things, market order and pending order. They both have their ups and downs, their advantages and their pros and cons. So that's um, very quick regarding the last part. Angel has a question. Does that make sense? By the way, Namdi, do you have any follow-up questions perhaps? Angel's asking if New Zealand does not increase uh, the interest rate and it stays the same will gold uh, go down and please tell me if my logic is right so with uh, in new zealand interest rate hike we would have higher demand for new zealand dollar on average across the board typically these are just general rules of thumbs because basically investors get more interest rate, more compensation if they hold the New Zealand dollar. So there will be more demand and um, basically it's positive for the currency, right? If it stays the same, it's probably slightly bearish. It does also depend on the statement that is released and the outlook that is given and the details that you can find in that, because if, if there's positive outlook for maybe a rate hike next time, you know, it could still have a bullish effect. Generally speaking though, yes, it didn't go up. So there's no reason to celebrate, let's say, 
and the Kiwi is expected to weaken a bit. Obviously, if the interest rate goes down, it typically weakens even more than if it stays the same. Uh, gold is closely related to the Aussie dollar uh, because of the fact that uh, the imports, sorry, uh, Australia exports gold. Uh, it exports a lot of commodities. Um, many of those go to, to Asia. Australia, of course, geographically pretty close to Asia relatively. So it, it has a lot of exports that go there. Uh, it's a big commodity, export commodity. So if... Uh, if gold price uh, goes up, you know they're going to be there's going to be more demand for the Aussie, so the Aussie goes up too. That's why those two often are aligned and in sync with each other. They're correlated to each other. Not always because Aussie, the Australian dollar has an interest rate as well. Gold bears nothing. It, you don't get any compensation for holding gold. You have some well, you have some compensation in the sense that uh, you know gold cannot. Basically, it doesn't default like a country could. In theory, it doesn't happen every day, but it, it happens when you look at a century. You know, it happens once in a while. So they, there are some advantages, but it doesn't give you a return except the value it might increase or a defensive measure against your portfolio, stuff like that. So and New Zealand is not is more a soft exporter of dairy goods. It is connected to Australia, uh, its economy, because it, it exports to Australia. So if Australia is doing well, New Zealand is doing well, basically, right? Um, but I don't think there's maybe indirect relationship between New Zealand and gold because, because of Australia, but I don't think there is a... I don't think there's a direct relationship necessarily. They might move similar just because of kind of their... The Aussie, but you know, basically, if the New Zealand goes down, the Australian dollar might go down, and then also gold might go down. So from that point of view, yes, indeed. Uh, let's see, Angel's looking for divergence on the MACD. Yeah, there is divergence indeed. Well, not yet, but I think there's a good chance of that happening indeed. How, how that's okay. No problem with any new novice questions. That's not a problem at all. How is profit made or calculated in relationship to pips? So it depends on your lot size. If you have a small lot size, uh, you will bake less, but you also risk less. So it depends on your account, the, the capital you have on your account, what is good risk or not, what is manageable risk, what makes sense. Because if you risk too much, then you're gambling in a way. And if you risk less, that is a plan of what, what is implemented with risk management. If you only risk half a percent or one percent, then you might even have a, a few losses in a row. But it's not going to, uh, you're not going to lose your entire account because of that. That's, that's good risk management. If you, if you risk half your capital on one trade, two losses and it's gone. That, that's, that's gambling. So if you have an account of uh, 5,000 euros, just an example, and you take a 1% risk on this trade, you can risk 50 euros and be within your risk management. It, you take those 50 euros and let's say you have an entry here at just a hypothetical at 09 on your pound and you put your stop loss though here at uh 89 and 80. so the risk in pips is 20 pips you can lose 20 pips right but you also want to not move, lose more than 50 euros so then you need to calculate the lot size so you can take uh, two and a half minis. That's the lot size. It's 25 micros, or it's a quarter of a standard. When you lose 20 pips with that lot size, that contract size, you'll lose 50 euros if I did my math correctly. 
And if you if the trade goes our way, in my way, and uh, let's say it moves up to the target I have in mind, then I could make 130 pips. All right, so it's quite an extreme example. This is not a standard because the target is 130, 130 pips, and the risk is 20, which is a 6 to 1 ratio. That's very high. So please don't take that as a, a normal. <laughs> it's just an example. But in theory, yes, you would be risking that 50, but you could win 300 euros if price reaches the target. It would be 130 pips, but would, those pips would be worth 300 euros with that particular lot size. If you have a lower lot size, if you don't have two and a half minis, but you have one mini, you would still be risking 20 pips to make 130 pips. It would still, that, the pips size would stay the same, but the amount would be less. It wouldn't be 50 euros, but it would be 20 euros risk. And you wouldn't make 300 euros, but you would make 120 euros. All right, folks. So let's uh, take a quick look at uh, maybe some other pairs. Euro pound, uh, sorry, pound yen. I was slightly bullish here, uh, but saying that it was a range. Uh, basically, it's yeah. It basically didn't even break above it. Really, tried to break twice, but it failed. And broke the support line and it's been falling ever since with the pound pretty strongly. Looking bearish, but I would not necessarily underestimate the yen side. I would definitely be careful with the 61.8 fib at 142.80. But I think until then, this S1 might not be more than just a small pause. There will be there could be divergence between this these bottoms. So one thing that could be good on the pound yen is to see if there's a bear flag. If there's a bear flag chart pattern, that could make it an interesting uh, structure. I myself was most interested in uh, the odd New Zealand as well, besides the majors like the euro dollar and dollar yen. And indeed, it's nicely continuing higher, so it's good. But that's about it, I guess. I think that uh, I see some more questions. I think that we can wrap it up. I guess I think we looked at, or we didn't look at the Aussie. We should look at the Aussie and Kiwi. Let's do that quickly. But first, one quick question here. Okay, great, Dumby. Yeah, it takes a bit of time. I, it, take a look at uh, idonmarkets.com uh, and go to articles. Uh, you will find out more information. You sh there should be more information about that in the article section here, education articles right there to see uh, you know the, the concepts written on, on paper. It will help too. Uh, classes on uh, AO, we, we have webinars in the past. Uh, Best is probably to go to the YouTube channel of Admin Markets. Do you know where it is, Samuel? Can you, you can always send me an email and I can help you find the YouTube channel. I'll write it down. All right, so a quick look at the Aussie still. Uh, let's see, Ozzy, yes, moving down. Sorry, let's see, Chopoli though, but yes, moving down. Uh, had divergence between this, these these tops, so the, the target is the long to moving average. It's getting there slowly but surely. Strong down, strong up, strong down. You know, Chopoli going down. 
Uh, S1 with the long to moving average is the target indeed, in my view. Uh, had a good breakout earlier today, and this trade is on its way. Um, and anyone trading this might have been looking for this break. But that has is in the past, that is behind us now. And I think that there's not much space left to trade this. So I would probably uh, personally not trade the Aussie at this moment. I think it should hit the S1. Then I want to see how it reacts to S1. So I don't have any particular trade idea on, on the Aussie. A Kiwi has the interest rate, so I would wait for that to tomorrow. I think we can look at that again uh, tomorrow. All right, folks. Well, thanks so much. I uh, hope to see you uh, tomorrow. We have more webinars, education, and go to Forks and CFD webinars. And uh, looking forward to see you then. Thanks for joining us today. Um, if you know, if you're looking for uh, more information, as I said, articles right here. If you're looking to trade with the MT4 Supreme Edition, go to platforms and click on. Uh, this, this tab right in the middle. And uh, wish you all great trading. Talk to you soon. Cheers.